Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good evening. It's been a while since we had our last, last session with the Quran. So what I want to do here is continue with the verse that we were looking at in the last video, which you can find on our YouTube channel. <clears throat> we were looking at the verse in the Quran, which is from the first chapter in the Quran, Malik Yawmiddin, Master of the Day of Judgment. We've talked a little bit about this, but I want to continue the discussion. And what I'm going to do is share the text with you, share the screen with you, if you give me a second. And as always, you can always um, ask questions. You can reach out to us through various means and uh, ask questions uh, whenever you have a question that you want to ask pertaining to the topic that we are discussing. <clears throat> so what you see here is a discussion on this verse, Maliki Yawmiddin, which is uh, the fourth verse in the Quran, which translates as God being um, the master of the day of judgment. <clears throat> so let's go through this. al thalith the third benefit that the Shaykh wants to uh, mention. I'm just going to skip the actual question itself or the um, the objection that's been raised, and I'm just going to deal with the response uh, for our benefit, inshallah. So he says that God <clears throat> is the king or the master and sovereign of everything that exists, al mawjudat So God is the master, he is the sovereign of everything that exists. In the meaning that God has power, Qadir, God has um, power um, to bring things from uh, non-existence to existence. Only God is able to do that. Only God has the power uh, to bring something that didn't exist at all and bring it to existence. And of course, we know that human beings can create things, but they are not able to bring from Al-Adam, to bring from non-existence. We deal with what is already existent out there. Um, or that Allah is able to change things from one state to another, right? And this qudra, this power that God has only belongs to him, i.e. to be able to bring things into non into existence. فَالْمَلِكْ الْحَقُّ هُوَ اللَّهِ So therefore, the real king, the real uh, sovereign is God because he is able to do what we cannot do and he has sovereignty, he has power over everything. So if you know this, he says, then we can say that the real king, the real sovereign is the sovereign of the day of judgment. Now, this is a central um, creedal matter that Muslims believe in, which is this idea that there is an afterlife and there is also a an accountability. There's also um, um, judgment that will take place in the life to come. So this is the Maliki Yawmiddin, that God is the sovereign of the day of judgment. This is very, very important. This is a, creedal, um, this is a creed that Muslims believe in. Right, that one has to accept and believe that there is a resurrection. And he says that And so for this resurrection to take place, for this accountability to take place in the life to come, it means that we will be brought back to life. And only God is able to bring creation to life. Only God is able to do that after their death. Only God has the power to do that. But he also says something very, very interesting because it may be that um, someone has died and they've been, uh, their body has been burnt and turned into ashes or their body is has been spread all over the earth. We don't know where the body is. He says, وَالْعِلْمُ بِتِلْكَ الْأَجْزَاءِ الْمُتَفَرِّقَةِ مِنْ أَبْدَاءِ النَّاسِ لَيْسَ إِلَّا لِلَا in, in terms of knowing, so even if a person has decayed, their body has completely decayed and you only have his bones or even less than that, God still knows uh, where all those constituent parts of that body is, every atom, right? 
بجميع المعلومات وقدرة المتعلق بجميع الممكنات ثبت أنه لا مالك ليوم الدين إلا الله so God has knowledge of the gathering of the resurrection being brought forth and so everything that will happen um, and that everything that needs to happen God has complete control over it and he will be the sovereign on the day of judgment and it can only be God God will be the only sovereign uh, on that day there's no king there's nobody else that will be a king on that day but God وتمام الكلام في هذا الفصل متعلق بمسألة الحشو والنشر. He says this is to do with um, resurrection and gathering. And so our author here, he's not going to go too much into detail, but it's a critical point. Right at the outset of the Quran, God is telling us that there will be accountability, that we will stand before our Creator. Now, as is the nature of our of our of our author here he entertains certain questions and one of the questions a very interesting one he says well how can god be the sovereign of the day of judgment when the day of judgment has not even occurred yet right this is a future event so how can you say that god is the sovereign of the day of judgment he, he basically in this passage here this is the question that is being asked Right? You'd rather say that you know he's going to be the sovereign of the Day of Judgment. Why has God phrased it in such a way? And this requires a bit of knowledge of Arabic grammar, which the author has dealt with here. But I'm not going to go into it. I'm just going to deal with the response. So this might be a question that someone may ask, that why has God said this? And essentially, there's two responses. <clears throat> in summary, that the Day of Judgment is such, a, such an event that's going to happen, it's though like it's the reality is such that it's established, right? And so it's necessary. Wisdom dictates that it's a necessary event. That it's going to happen. So God's telling you, you know, it's not like that it may happen or um, something may change. No, God's saying there's going to be a day of judgment and it's going to happen, right? It's done. It's going to happen. Whatever you feel, however you feel about it, whether you believe in God or not, you accept. Um, the existence of God, you submit yourself to God or not, the reality is that we will all stand before God and have to give accountability for our existence on this planet, right, for our existence. The second thing he says is that, well, if you, if you think about it as well, for a person who is um, dead, right, person who's already dead, for them, um, the day of judgment has already begun. Right, because that's the minor day of judgment, as we know in our tradition. So for this person, as soon as the person dies, they've moved on to the next realm. For So for them, in a way, the judgment has already begun because there's nothing that they can do once they've passed away that can um, add or take away from their deeds in this world. Right, it's, The book has been closed and now they are basically waiting to be resurrected and to be brought forth before their creator. So he says these are two reasons that um, one can um, furnish, one can offer in order to deal with this question. All right, so that's straightforward. Then he's dealing with another interesting discussion, which is more to do with um, some of the words that are used to describe God. He says, أَنَّهُ تَعَالَى ذَكَرَ فِي هَذِي السُّورَةِ مِنْ أَسْمَاءِ نَفْسِهِ خَمْسَةً that if you look in this chapter of the Quran, it's a very short chapter of the Quran, you'll find that God has used um, five names that, that refer to him. One of them is Allah, then you have Rabb, then you have Rahman, then you have Rahim, and then you have Malik. So you have these five names that God has used um, in this particular chapter. I mean, God has more names, but he's used, he's uh, in this particular surah, five particular names are used for Quran. Now, our author is going to try and answer the question as to why these five names are used and what can we take away from, what meaning, what learning can we take from this as well. And this is what he does here. He says, look, this is the reason. It is as though God is saying, That first and foremost, I created you, right? I brought you into existence. And so I am God, I am your Lord. So this is the word Allah. Then he says, "Summa Then I, um, I gave you, I bestowed upon you uh, various forms of gifts, right? 
uh, to allow you to flourish, to give you the opportunity to flourish. So I am your Rabb, Rabbaituka. Um, I gave you certain things that allowed you or that gave you the potentiality uh, if you recognize them and use them correctly to to flourish as well. So I nurtured you. So I'm Rabb, I'm your Rabb. So this is the second word. ثُمَّ عَصَيْتَ فَسَتَرْتُ عَلَيْكَ وَأَنَا رحمان. But then because you are a human being and you're, um, you're fallible, and you're given to weakness, uh, you disobeyed me. So I concealed you, I concealed your faults. So I'm the Rahman, I am the uh, compassionate. ثُمَّ تُبْتُ فَغَفَرَتُ لَكَ فَأَنَا رَحِيمٌ Then you turned to me and sought repentance, sought forgiveness. So I forgive you. So I am Rahim. I am the merciful. So here Rahman is being used in a sense that God has concealed your faults even before you turn to him. The second one, the Rahim is here meaning that once you turn to him and then he forgave you. So one is pre-turning to God and one is post-turning to God. So Rahman and Rahim. And then he says, ثُمَّ لَا بُدَّ مِنْ إِصَالِ الْجَزَاءِ إِلَيْكَ فَأَنَا مَالِكِ يَوْمِ الدِّينِ And so um, after all of this, there is no doubt that you will be compensated. You will receive your rewards um, for your deeds. So therefore, I am the master of the day of judgment. Right. So very, very interesting to bear in mind as well. Um, and someone might ask another question. So here, he is dealing with this question. This is fascinating because our scholars, when they were um, engaging with the Qur'an, uh, the the book of God, um, they weren't afraid to ask questions um, and find answers to those questions in the Quran, but also reflect upon them to try and deepen their um, connection to God. Right. Uh, so this is a form of worship, which is like you're trying to understand what is it that you need to do to come closer to your Creator, and to have no doubt in your connection to your Creator. So anyway, he has another question. He likes to bring questions across. He says, إِنَّهُ تَعَلَى ذَكَرَ الرَّحْمَنُ الرَّحِيمُ فِي التَّسْمِيَةِ So as Muslims, we know that when we begin reciting the Qur'an, we say, بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمُ So we say this phrase in the name, we begin in the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate. We say, we said it once. And then we say again in this surah, in this chapter, we say it again, because we say, بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمُ And then we recite the chapter, أَلْحَمْدُ اللَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَلَمِينَ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمُ So you have بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمُ And you then, مَرَّةً ثَانِيَةً Then the second time, you say, بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمُ So he's saying, why would we repeat it? Right? Why, what is the wisdom in this? Right? Uh, we don't repeat other names. So why do we repeat these names? One, when we begin, our recitation and one when we are reciting this chapter and this is a beautiful explanation and I'll end with this explanation he says قُلْنَا التَّقْدِيرُ كَأَنَّهُ قِيل it is as though God is saying أُذْكُرْ أَنِّي إِلَاهٌ وَرَبٌ مَرَّةً وَاحِدَةً that um, I mention so God is saying that I mention that I am, I am your God that I am the God I am the Lord right um However, if you look at the Quran carefully, and, and, and you'll find that even the word Eli is mentioned before as well. But anyway, in any case, he says you say it once, and you're basically mentioning that he is the, he is God, and he is the Lord. You only say it once, right? Was Quranni Rahman Rahim Maratain. However, God he's he's saying God says that when you say Rahman Rahim, you say it twice. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim and then you say it in chapter Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen ar-Rahman Rahim. Why do you do this? He says, لتعلم, to know أن العناية بالرحمة أكثر منها بسائر الأمور. This is, this, is, this is really, really, you know, it should be written in gold if you like. That he's saying that the fact that you mention compassionate, God being compassionate and merciful, is that you come to know that Mercy is more important to God or to me, as in God saying this, to me than anything else. Then he, in other words, God's saying that mercy is something that overcomes everything else, 
right? We have traditions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, which also emphasize a similar point. And so, so after we repeat these names of mercy, it is as though God is saying, لا تقتر بذلك فإني مالك يوم الدين. But he says, just because I've said that um, I am merciful, I am compassionate, it's been repeated twice, don't be deceived that, you know, a person may say, well, I'll take advantage of God's mercy and I'll continue disobeying him and he'll show mercy towards me. He said, no, God immediately, uh, immediately afterwards reminds us that Maliki Yawmiddin, that don't be deceived because on the day of judgment, you will stand before your sovereign, your master. It is as though Allah says elsewhere in the Quran, zambi wa qabil tawbi liqab right? Uh, so don't be complacent in uh, this regard because God says in the Quran, ghafir uh, zam that God is the one who forgives sins and he accepts repentance when a person turns to God sincerely, then God will forgive that person. But Shadid al so it's a very similar verse, that he is also strict in punishment, right? So don't take advantage, right? Be wary that um, he is strict in punishment. And Allah also has Zittawl. Now it means long reach, but in other words, God has a God long reach in every things as in everything as well. So that's just basically um, the verse of Maliki Yamiddin in the first chapter of the Quran. What we'll do next week, if God wills, is we'll look at the next verse, uh, which is um, talking at the, about the next verse that comes in the Quran. And um, that it is to you. That uh, it is you that we worship, and it is you that we seek help and assistance from as well. Um, any book recommendation that Islam is a true religion or Quran is a divine symbol? And what's your favorite book of all time? Um, any book recommendation that Islam is a true religion? Um, that's a good question, actually. Um, I, I, my my own experience has been just through my own reflections and reading and meeting people and asking questions. But if you want to reach out to me privately, um, uh, hopefully we can we can we can maybe have a, a discussion in terms of trying to um, understand why Islam is a true religion um, and that Quran is divinely sent by God. And what's my? F I don't have a favorite book of all time. Um, I just I just read. You know, I don't really have a book that's my favorite of all time. Thank you for your question. So I think we'll end there. Uh, as always, you can always reach out to me and question, ask questions. And I hope you found that useful. And then in the next video, we will move on to the next verse. We're doing this gently, um, reflectively, because the Quran is a book. Uh, which Muslims believe is for the guidance of humankind and it takes time um, and one must not rush um, such matters. One must take it easy and respect knowledge and have um, a sort of um, reflective posture when they're engaging with um, important texts, especially like the Quran. So I hope this has been useful and until next time, uh, stay safe. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.